Engine Builder fans, I'm Greg Jones and welcome to another episode of Industry Insiders. Today in studio, my guest is Nick Orofici of Fluid Amper. Nick, thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate you being down here. Thanks for having us. Uh, now normally we kick off the show, you know, getting to know our guest a little bit and uh, some background about you, but I think most of our viewers are going to be staring at this contraption <laughs> here, like what the hell is this thing? Uh, so, so I wanted to let you just get that out of the way and then talk a little bit about you know, exactly what this is and what it means um, you know, for your viscous dampers. Okay. So uh, if you've ever seen us at a trade show, this is, uh, we take this along with us. Uh, it's the silicone that's inside of our damper. Uh, there's a two-pound brass ball here, and the silicone is uh, 45,000 times thicker than 30-wit motor oil. So it'll take uh, about six and a half minutes for that ball to fully drop down. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just uh, showing, you know, what's inside the damper. I also brought our uh, cutaway. Uh, this is a, uh, a big block Chevy damper. It's a six and a quarter circle track kind of application. But uh, so all of our dampers are kind of built along the same uh, line here. Uh, you have your outer housing. Um, and then, so we machine all that out, and then we put these inertia ring down inside of it, uh, laser weld the cover, and uh, we do a pressure test and, and pump it full of silicone. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's just a couple props displaying, you know, what, yeah. what we have. So, Nick, just like this brass ball here that's being suspended in the silicone, that's that's effectively what that inner ring of the damper is doing uh, inside there. Inside yeah, the, inside that housing unit. Yep. Yeah. So the uh, the inertia ring is suspended inside the silicone, and as the engine's running, it'll go in and out of phase, mm -hmm. and uh, it self tunes to the harmonics of the engine. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, Nick, now I'll, I'll I'll go backwards here and let you talk a little bit about the background of Fluid Amper and uh, you know exactly what you guys do. I know there's a few different um, companies kind of under that. That roof there, uh, with the Horschel Brothers and yep. Vibratech, and yeah. So if you could give us some background. Okay, uh, so Vibratech uh, TVD is the parent company of Fluid Damper. Um, same basic principle. Uh, it's just uh, for like the heavy duty uh, gas and compression, uh, Class Eight trucks, things like that. Yeah. Um, so that started in uh, 1946, and uh, just kind of evolved from there. Um, a lot of people really wanted this technology, the viscous technology for racing and aftermarket uh, performance. So that's where Fluid Damper was born in uh, 1985 and has been going along ever since. Um, yeah. You know, starting out with your traditional small block, big, big block Chevy applications and uh, just kind of going on from there. Um, we cover uh, diesel import, domestic, um, almost every, you know, hot engine that's out there and you know other ones too we have a few uh you know oddball ones and yeah. and whatnot but uh yeah we're always coming out with uh new dampers and uh, new applications or different applications so yeah and i understand like you know you got dampers that are size of the one there in front of us uh, you said that's a small block chevy yeah uh, uh, that's a big block big block chevy yeah. i apologize uh all the way to like ones that 50 inches or something. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, so that's the Vibratech line. Yeah. Um, so they just range in a different, uh, you know, a different, the smallest ones we make, uh, we make some cam dampers that are like three inches around. Yeah. And then um, the biggest one that we make in-house is uh, 28 inches. Okay. Um, so, but uh, we service and maintain, uh, you know, 50 plus inch dampers. Yeah. Uh, so it just kind of depends. Yeah. Um, but crazy. yeah, it's, it's a, it's, Definitely a, a great technology and a, a wide variety of uh, applications you can use it for. Yeah, uh, we even do them for drive lines, so they're, you know, it's a little bit different setup, but same principle. The right. you know, right. viscous fluid and the inertia ring inside. Um, all right, so now obviously the name uh, fluid amper, uh, well known out there, uh, and you guys do viscous dampers. Can you just elaborate on some of those different styles of dampers that are available to folks and why? you know, a fluid damper or a viscous damper, you know, has been a great technology for you guys and, and you're kind of, you know, leading the charge out there. Yeah, so 
Your, uh, your typical damper is a rubber elastomer damper. So that's like what you'd find on your stock engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you have your inertia ring and your uh, housing or flange mounting uh, service, and it's bonded together with a rubber elastomer material. Uh, those are a narrow band, uh, don't have much, uh, offer much protection outside of just like what it's tar the frequency it's targeting. Um, and then you have your, uh, like a performance O-ring style, um, there's a pendulum style, and uh, I think it's a clutch pack style. So the, you know, everybody, you know, a few different technologies, um, those all wear out and need to be rebuilt, retuned. Um, ours doesn't doesn't need any of that. It never yeah. needs to be rebuilt. Never needs to be retuned. Uh, I mean, there's really nothing that can go wrong with it as long as it's never been damaged in a fire or uh, dropped anything that you know, would cause a dent to where this right. inertia ring couldn't move around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's built to last the life of the engine. So it, it's pretty much almost like a one and done purchase. You know? Yeah, yeah. You were telling us earlier that you actually, you know, the company started in '85 and you, you still service. Some dampers that the, are original. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a few people, uh, racers and whatnot, that had sent their damper in to be checked, and yeah. I was from original 1985. Uh, worked just as good as it did the day it was. You know, it worked just as good as one that comes off the line today, and that and that one was, uh, you know, racing its entire life. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so, Nick, what are some common misconceptions or? Maybe some frequently asked questions that you guys get about dampers in general, and then about you know your specific product. Yeah, so uh, generally, a lot of it's uh, we'll get like uh, the, uh, actually a lot of people don't know there's an inertia ring inside. They yeah. think it's like a bag of silicone or just filled with silicone. Uh, so, but they all do have an inertia ring, no matter mm -hmm. what the style or uh, application. You no, know, they're all they're all built the same. Um, I guess one of the other big, like the weight of it, because it's a little bit heavier. Uh, one of the big things with our damper, and only a viscous damper offers that, is uh, rotating weight. So when the engine's running, this inertia ring is, is suspended in the silicone, and it's suspended in the air. So you're actually not having as much weight on the crank. So yeah. it's actually a third less of the weight. So where this damper might be, you know, say 10 pounds, the uh, crank would only feel about 6 Point nine or so, like you know, we'll say seven pounds. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually lighter than, in some cases, the OE, but uh, most cases of competitors' dampers as well. Yeah. So that's that's a, a great benefit that a lot of people don't even know about uh, that a viscous damper has. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Another one is so our damper, it self tunes in real time. So throughout the entire RPM range whether it's a stock engine or full out race or somewhere in between, the damper is always tuning in real time to the harmonics of the engine. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, do it doesn't matter if, say, you put a big turbo on it, big injectors, or uh, you know, change up some programming or something like that. Right. Uh, whereas like a competitor's damper may not offer as much protection because it, it does, it's not optimally tuned for that. Uh, this damper, uh, all fluid dampers, they self-tune to that. Uh, so it it gives you that uh, broad range coverage instead yeah. of like a narrow band like your OE ones and other styles. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's really neat. Um, Nick, you know, for the different segments of the market that you guys serve, uh, like diesel or import or domestic, you know, what are some of those main differences from engine to engine um, that you guys have to change with the damper? Because it, it seems like it wouldn't necessarily be that inner ring or the silicone, but there's just the attachment points and stuff. Yeah, uh, I mean, each damper, whether it's domestic, import, or diesel, um, you know, you'll have your your different flanges and, and mounting styles, mm -hmm. but um, every engine, some may require more inertia, so a larger damper, yeah. um, different grades of silicone. Uh, like I said, this one, you know, we have, there's there's different grades, different thicknesses of silicone. Right. Uh, so depending on, you know, what application, uh, you know, engineering would go through, figure out which, you know, what needs to be done or used, and then go from there. So Nick, you were talking about the silicone just now, uh, and, you know, this is a proprietary silicone to you guys. Yep. Um, and, and you said you have different different types of silicone, or it varies slightly depending on? Uh, it's the, the thickness of okay. the, the silicone. 
So just yeah. uh, like some of the, the very large, huge dampers that we were talking about before, those the um, the thickness of the silicone would be more like a, like a cough syrup, whereas opposed to something like this, it's forty five thousand times thicker than thirty weight motor oil. Yeah. So that's way, you know more more thicker than uh, yeah. like molasses or something. Well, you were telling us so many people are interested in touching it or you know yeah. wanting to feel it, and it's always a mistake because it. It's really hard to get off your hands yeah, and, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's very, right? very sticky, tacky. Yeah. Uh, does not does not play well nice with yeah. others. <laughs> uh, and then you were also saying how it's got a, a fantastic heat range in terms of uh, you know being able to resist high heat as well as you know well below freezing temperatures. Yes, yeah. That's, and a lot of people yeah. think it might freeze or something. But. Yeah, and a lot of people. That, that's actually a, a good one because we yeah. do get asked that a lot. Um, will it freeze and, and whatnot? Uh, it's actually the same. The 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 silicone doesn't change thickness from negative forty up to three hundred degrees. Mm -hmm. So a anywhere in there, we've had people, uh, you know, up north, Canada, Alaska, uh, different areas, say, "Hey, I want. I'd love to run your damper, but I'm concerned because we get, you know, negative thirty up here or whatever. Um, that we have plenty of them up in Alaska and." Northern Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, uh, you know, everywhere, yeah. and it doesn't doesn't affect it or change anything about it at all. Yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, now, Nick, you're also telling us uh, you got a couple new dampers uh, kind of in the works. Yep. Is that something yeah. that you want to tell the folks a little bit about? Or are you still uh, no, waiting we, on that stuff? Yeah, no. Um, we'll have. Uh, we should be releasing it officially. At PRI this year will be our, um, our Godzilla 7.3 mm -hmm. damper. Uh, we're working on one for the LSA. It's not quite there yet. Uh, but we'll have that one soon. Um, and then uh, the uh, 6.2 uh, Hemi. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have that one and hopefully the Coyote one rolling out. Yeah. A couple other ones um, for the uh, newer Miata and whatnot. But... Not quite ready yet, but hopefully soon. Uh, yeah, so you guys got a lot, a lot in the works. That's awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it takes a long time to develop one, get everything done, the testing process and everything, right. uh, before it's actually out. But well, uh, it sounds like that that background and the R and D and the engineering really pays off if it's kind of like you said a one and done purchase and yeah, you know, aside from something bad happening to it, yeah, it, yeah, it should have a lifetime uh, of use. Yep. Yeah. As long as. Uh, as long as, as long as you don't drop it or you know things like that, yeah. I, I did have a guy that uh, he had a he I, I don't know if he ran it over or not, but he got hit with a uh, with a um, a sign a road sign pole. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure how that happened. Yeah, and he said that there's an imprint in there, and I was like, yeah, I, I would suggest this that to be no good, replace it. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it's. Pretty much one and done. Built yeah. to, it, they're built to last the life of the engine. Yeah, that's great. Uh, now, Nick, we we didn't chat much about you yet. You know, I know you've had a number of years in this industry. You used to be a diesel mechanic for yep. the longest time, and uh, you know now you've been at Fluid Amper for a few years. You want to just talk a little bit about your background and and how you found Fluid Amper? Yeah, uh, I was a diesel mechanic for over 15 years, um, installed plenty of the Vibratech versions. <clears throat> Growing up, you always heard of fluid damper, so it was, uh, you know, very common to, to hear about, oh, you're building an engine, you got to have a fluid damper on it, uh, you know, and then when I, start, when I uh, started working in the diesel industry and becoming a diesel mechanic, you know, you're we replacing the dampers, and uh, an injury kind of put me out of that field. And oddly enough, I seen an ad for the position, and I didn't had no idea they were local to me, and I just never paid attention, I guess, to that, and uh, applied. And it still kind of it keeps me in the uh, the automotive industry, which I am very passionate about and and into. So uh, it was a great fit, and yeah. been there for over four years. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well. We do really appreciate you coming into studio today and yeah, uh, thanks for having being us. on our Industry Insiders episode. And uh, yeah, wish you the best of luck the rest of this year and into next year. And uh, thank you very look much. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys at PRI. Absolutely.
Guys, we appreciate you tuning in today. Make sure you're checking out Fluid Amper and uh, all their damper products. And make sure you're checking out Engine Builder for more engine content. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.